presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to Eddie in Boca Raton. Hey, Eddie, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how are you, man? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Good, good. It is a treasure to have TFNN every hour during the trading day to be there to help you, to guide you, and even to give you some peace of mind or like that, that somebody else is there with you while you're, while you're training this crazy market, either up or down. Well, listen, we appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here because we wouldn't be out here, folks, if we didn't have all you guys, gals, tigers and tigresses as clients. And, you know, the market teaches you every single day, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Let's take a look at one of our four agreements. Release the need to be right. When you believe something, you assume you're right. You may even destroy relationships in order to defend your position. Let go of the need to defend your position. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials trading up 112. Uh, Dow Industrials trading up four. NASDAQ trading up 112. S&P's up 11 and a half. Gold, gold contract down $19.80, trading at 1925 an ounce. We had silver down 34 cents, $22.67 an ounce. Light sweet crude down three bucks, trading at $69.52 a barrel, notes and bonds. The 10 year note down 16 ticks, trading at 112.25. The 30 year off a full point plus two ticks at 127.03 in King Dollar. King, excuse me, folks, King Dollar is trading up 314 ticks at 102.386. The euro is at 109. The yen is trading at 143, and the British pound is at 127 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at it. What do you have? Well, we'll start with the futures again, because we do not have a high volume low out there in the futures, but I want to show you, I'm going to repeat what I just said in that update. What you do have is this, is that we get a few minutes, we got like yeah, you don't have many minutes there to get underneath this number. 4418 uh, is the number, folks, okay? You're at 4420 right now because we do. We took it out. You took it out with light volume. We did uh, 28,000 contracts here versus 45. Um, but you can see intraday here what we did is that the first leg down, that, that's when we got into the price point of, of 43.98. And what we had done there is that we did 46,000 contracts, right? And then when we went higher, now we, we, what you're doing with time in the trade, you're always going against, what, well, you, when we bounced, you, you're looking at the high and say, okay, what are we going against? So the 44.17, which was 28,000, was going against 45. And that's why you had the failure there. Well, we came back down. Okay, now we came back down. You had 33,000. So you can see the contraction of volume there was pretty dramatic. 33 versus 46. Now, that being said, if we get below this 4418, you have a high probability that you will go try to whack the 4402. Because what we do have is that you can see all the volume is still at these two downdrafts. You know, so. It's going to, you know, we, the volatility bottom line has been much slower. We, we're in summer trading, bottom line, you know, uh, we've had a high, a low today of uh, 30 S&P points. When 30 S&P points uh, a few weeks ago, you know, we, we could get like in a, in a heartbeat. But bottom, we'll see where the baby shakes out. We go into the um, NQs. The NQs are exact. well, yeah. Now, no, let's do the SPY, because the SPY, what you have with the SPY out here, it looks like the SPY, you're going to have a rejection of lower price out here today. You're going to have lighter volume. You got down to 433.60. You're at 436. 
you can see the contraction of volume is pretty dramatic. 46 million shares, that 46 million was going against 95. That's saying that, hey, guess what, man? The, the high is game once again, which is pretty wild, but that's, that's how this is reading right now. I mean, unless we just fall apart at the close, but that's how this is reading. We go to the gold contract. That gold contract, you know, it's tricky, but the bottom line is that you have two separate ABC structures on the way down. You know, the first one that you have is a 1902. The second one is 1875. You know, you're down $19.80 out here today. And that, that, you know, bottom line, it's not that bad with the dollar being up 300 ticks. The 300 ticks on the dollar, we'll go through that in a second, you know, isn't putting pressure on the uh, S&P, which is unusual, but the bottom line, it isn't. You can see that, yeah, you have a contraction of volume here, but that being said, this thing wants those bars down there where we came off the last low. So the last, the last low in this contract is 18, is 19, yeah, 1846. The next low after that is the 1848. And, you know, the, the bar where the strength started is 1867. So my take is that, that in the, that's the bottom of the bar. The top of the bar is 1908. So that's saying to me, that's the bar that we're going to trade into. Notes and bonds. Now, the note and bond market, bottom line, you're pulling back today in the 10. That being said, the pullback on the 10 is with light volume. You know, so this is going to be a rejection of lower price once again. Well, it hasn't rejected it yet. We're at 110. We're at 112.24. And the rejection... We got to 112.21. You like the you like the bottom seat like it, well you like to see it higher than that. But the bottom line is that you have a huge contraction of volume. We have 1.2 1 1.2 million contracts going into 1.7, as well as 1.9. Oil. Let's get to the oil market. Oil wants a lot lower price, man. That's the bottom line. I mean, they, they're trying to keep this thing up, but everything they try to do, they just can't get done. You know this thing. Now we have we got one. Uh, one, two, three. You get three higher, lower highs. Let me make sure of this. One, two, three. Yeah, you get three lower highs. Right at this point, you only got one lower low because what happens is that I can't start all the way back because I got to start at the high. You get big volume coming in. My take is that what you're going to see here is that you are going to go down to the bottom of that, that consolidation. And if we get over to the dollar, you can see what that's happening with the dollar. This dollar, um, what, it, what came out, what it did today is that it got down to the price point of 101,921, and bottom line, it rejected it. You know, uh, we're uh, at 102,387. Yeah, 387. Uh, now, the market hasn't reacted to that today, you know, because no normally would you, you get something like that, you just have that S&P go south like ASAP, but it hasn't reacted to it. Some of the higher volume equities, well, no, no, let's go through silver. We take a look at the silver market. Inside of the silver market, what you have? Silver hit 22.51 today. You know, I, I did these numbers. These are the ABC down, too, somewhere into the 21.30 uh, area. Stay right there, folks. Come right back with our man, Mr. Tim Ord. Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading down six. NASDAQ is up 109. S&Ps are up 11 and a half. We'll come right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. 
Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now down 23. We get the NASDAQ up 100. S&Ps are up 9. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the hour. And you can reach Tim, folks, every trading day at ord-oracle.com. That's ord-oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on? Well, thanks for having me on again. Um Actually, I, I sent you over four charts. Hope you got them. I have them. I have the first one up right now. Absolutely. All right. All right. Uh, chart one is just kind of short-term analysis. And we got out on Friday and we got back in yesterday. I thought the correction may be a little bit bigger, but it's probably ending. But anyhow, in a nutshell, going into last Thursday, yep. we're up six days in a row. Right. And... and it, Market does a lot with momentum. I'm starting to look at a lot of different type of things, and momentum kind of rules a lot of different. Um, well, actually, kind of rules the stock market. Yes. But anyhow, if you get the market up six days in a row, within five days, it'll be higher eighty three percent of the time. Wow. That's so what last. Is, yep. Okay. Yeah. So last Thursday, uh, the market was down. Friday was down. Uh, Monday down. Uh, no, Monday was a holiday. It'd be down Tuesday, down Wednesday. Uh, but anyhow, on this pullback, we started. So, you know, you're up six days in a row. Uh, the market's supposed to be higher within five days, 83% of the time. Well, five days is Friday. That'd be five trading days. So to, so either uh, the market's supposed to bottom, you know, today or tomorrow. Yes. To get this rally going. So, anyhow, the market did pull back, and the only time you really want to buy if you start to see panic in the market. If you don't have panic, then you're not going to have a bottom. And on Tuesday, uh, the market trend closed at 1.71. Anything above 1.2 is considered panic. And ideally, you'd like to see down to greens minus 200 or greater. We got 177. That was close. And... There's some rules that I kind of developed over the years with that. Um, when you get that kind of combination where you get a trend above 1.2 and down to reading below minus 200, then quite match it. But you usually uh, start looking for a low within the same day as readings to us two days later. Okay. Well, so two days later would be Friday. Um, uh, a day later would be yesterday. And it's one of the reasons why we got a bicycle. And yesterday we had a 1.38 trend reading. Well, if you get two days, if the market's an established uptrend, which I define established uptrend, is when 
on a weekly time frame, as the market is above the mid Bollinger Band, it's uh, in an intermediate term uptrend. That's what's happening now. So, in that type of uptrend, if you get two days of trend readings that add up to three, uh, you're usually looking below the same day, possibly as late as a uh, day later. So, you got kind of two different combinations of panic. You get a two day trend over three, and you got a, uh, a trend reading 1.71. And uh, turn it down to degree. You know, I, I probably the audience is spinning their heads right now. No, 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 no. This is you know what's so great about this, Tim and folks. Okay, is this is that we're going to go through two segments because I saw that you sold. You know, you sold basically at the high, and I saw when you were getting back in last night. I says this is so intriguing. In particular, Tim, you know, because I went over your workshop. I've gone over that workshop four times already, and. and you know, it was an amazing workshop. Thank you very much. Uh, it was just fabulous. And I was, uh, that's what, you know, I couldn't wait to get you on to ask you there those questions about the aspect of what is amazing to me is that, you know, you could get a um, panic even though we didn't go down that far, you know, but yeah. that you can see that the aspect of that, that trend was saying that people are really nervous, right? I mean, that's how you're looking at it, right? Yeah, that's that, right. Yeah. It, it, you got to get people on the stealth side right. to get that trend up. Um, right. Because, you know, it, it's a advanced decline and volume combination indicator. Yeah. So you got to have, you got to get, you know, so basically the, the dumb money is selling and the smart money is buying. So it right. Kind of boils and then down to. in this particular case, you put that together with the market being at the mid Bollinger Band, right? Well, uh, there's there's a little bit. Well, anyhow, there's more than that. Define, no, I got it. I will get it. Okay, that's cool. I, yeah. This. Well, what I define as an uptrend is when the market stays above its mid Bollinger Band on the weekly time frame. Oh, so cool. I got it. Okay, stays so, above in a mid. So, so when when I say the three day or the two day trend has to be above three, the market has to be an established uptrend. Yes. You know, above the weekly bullet. So anyhow, there's a lot of different rules going on. No, no, that's cool. <laughs> Yeah. So it, so anyhow, it works it works pretty good. So anyhow, the the bottom window there yep. is the uh, two day trend, and I just marked it when. Uh, well, this is uh, the average. So the two days average is one point five. So uh, I marked the times when the two day trend did get above uh, one point five, or when you add them up, be three. So and you can see it picked out all the lows decently. Over the last couple of months, yes. Uh, so, um, so anyhow, it's, it's a pretty good. Deal. There's another thing too. On Friday, you can't quite see it on my chart there, but Friday, uh, we hit a new high on higher volume. Market, my opinion, never makes. And you probably could find an example, but it's pretty rare. But on a daily time time frame, you never make a final high. You always make a final high on lighter volume, never yeah. a high, higher volume. Right. No, you make a sure. higher high on higher volume, you're going to at least go back up and test that high. Right. So even Friday, I kind of sold. I was kind of nervous because I sold because it, um, I was thinking that we're probably not going to go down far. And if I started seeing panic and then ticks and trend, I was going to kind of be in a hurry to buy back. Yeah. And uh, so anyhow, that, that may be right. So I maybe did. The, you know, closing low yesterday, and uh, the next rally we should break above at least last Friday's high because okay. last Friday's high had higher volume. Okay, I don't know how high is high is going to be, but right, um, it, it could be it could be interesting. So yeah, yeah. Um, so cool. Uh, okay, and, do you want to go to the next chart? Yeah, we we can go to the next chart. This is, you know, that's a, that's my analysis for. Kind of the reasoning why I got out and got back in. No, no, I'm with you, and I think it's fabulous analysis, man. I was, I was, you know, the I'm I'm really intrigued, Tim, with this deal about the panic, and you don't have to have a vicious market going all the way down to have panic, and and I'm quite familiar with that. But now it's nice to have a couple tools to look at it that way. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. If, if you don't, matter of fact, off that top back in, in January of 2022, when that market was starting to go down, the trend didn't go up. Right. And that was a big warning sign that, you know, something, something bad's going to happen. And yes. It did. And 
Uh, so you've got panic coming right off the top. It's usually a pretty good sign. If you don't have panic coming off the top, you know, you can buckle up your belt because it might go on for a while until you do finally get panic. Right. But, you know, I, I've read a lot of different books over the years. Some got me on the wrong track and it's, and it's still stuck in my brain. I'm trying to still try to forget those stuff. But in a nutshell, from my years of experience, you know, panic is is really a good thing for the market. Yes. You know, if you, if you can find it, uh, then there's a lot of different indicators you can use. You can use kind of advanced decline lines. You can use McCall and Oscar type things, the yep. donation index. You can use the VIX. You can use, for short term, you can use the trend and tick and, nice. and yes. a bunch of other stuff. Stay right there, Tim. We'll come right back. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's off 56, NASDAQ's up 81, S&Ps are up 3. We're talking about our man, Mr. Tim Ord, and we are bisecting and dissecting this market. Uh, should I go to the next chart now, Tim? Yeah, we can go to the next chart. We kind of went over that first one pretty good. That was daily. This is the weekly um, SPYs, and it goes back to uh, mid-2018. Okay. And, um, anyhow, I want to actually talk about the bottom window. The bottom window yes. is the percent B. And what that says is if it's at the midline of it, uh, let's see how I say this. Anyhow, it's... it's it measures where the Bollinger Bands are 
Uh, so this is a weekly Bollinger Band on the SPYs. And when the, the bottom window gets above one, it means that market is above or is at the upper Bollinger Band. And when it's at 50, it's at the mid Bollinger Band. And when it's at below zero, it's below the Bollinger Band. Okay. So, well, anyhow, markets, uh, they, they kind of, uh, they get out of, if they're going up too fast, that's usually a bad sign. And what I want to point out is when it gets way above uh, one, on this last go around, it did get above one, but not a lot. Of going back to what in two what, about five six years here, the highest it ever got above is mid Bollinger Band was the, back in, at the top near the top anyhow of 2021. It got up to like 1.25, I think it was, and I circled it in red on that chart. I see it. Yeah, never been. Yeah, and it's never been higher in that time frame. I have shown it got close here over you know, last week or so, but didn't quite get there. So it kind of made me a little bit nervous. But anyhow, I got up there, and markets tend to always go back to the norm. When it gets out of the norm, it goes back to the norm. The right. norm on, on this big trend is basically the mid-Bollinger Band. That's where the norm is. Okay. Uh, so it, it, if it gets above the upper Bollinger Band too, ma- too much, most likely, at least going to go back to mid Bollinger Band, or could possibly even go a lot lower. Right. Okay. It's a it's it's kind of a good indicator to tell you kind of where you are. Yes. And I kind of use that conjunction with the um, the uh, VIX, which is the next window up from the bottom. Okay. The second window up. I see. Yeah. Uh, so anyhow, the bone or the VIX. This is on the weekly time frame. Anything below. 17, uh, which is, I have it all in uh, pink there. Yes. Times when it's below 17. The market's usually in a trending mode. And we've been below kind of 17, you know, generally since about April. And today we're hitting like 12.58. Last time I looked at it, we're like we're hitting new lows. And that's usually, uh, you know, if the market's going down, and the VIX is going down. That that's not supposed to happen. When the market goes down, the VIX is supposed to go up. Right. So if it's going down, that kind of gives you going back, referring back to page one. The reason why I went long, I noticed the VIX wasn't even going up. Yes. And I'm thinking uh, so. That kind of gave me more courage, I guess, to step in that trade yesterday. Which is so cool. Uh, yeah. No, I get it. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, because you know, if the VIX was going down along with the market, you know, I'm thinking, well, now you now you got, you know, what's the indi- what indicators do you you uh, rely on? Not all indicators work all the time. That's the reason why I personally use a bunch of type of different indicators, and I like the the ones that show panic preferably because right. once you start getting panic, you know, you're at least getting close to a low. It's not the you know right. It's it's hard. If you don't have panic and and you're just buying in the market, you're going to just blow yourself up. Right. So, but at least you got panic, you know you're getting close to a low. Yes. So but anyhow, uh, anyhow, with a VIX below 13 now, um, and and so this, I think this correction is over. But what I'm watching right now is how far we're away from the mid Bollinger Band. And where we are right now in the market. So if you get too far from the mid Bollinger Band, and then you start staying above the upper Bollinger Band for any length of time, you're going to head for trouble. And so I'm kind of watching. I'm thinking, if the market was up six days in a row, that predicted market will be higher within, you know, a few more days or yes. so. So next week uh, could be a, a decent up market. Then after that, you got Fourth of July. Fourth of July time frames. A lot of times you can have uh, highs or lows in that time frame. Right. So I'm thinking the next high could be a worthwhile high, and you may see that uh, the summer dog days. I guess you might say where a consolidation may may be starting, and we could possibly pull back to thirty cool. twenty area. Sometimes you know later. You know, in July, maybe August. Right. Times. Because, Tim, so uh, if we got into that up of Bollinger Band and then you, the trend and tick came in, you know, simultaneously, meaning, you know, that you, you'd be saying that, okay, hold it, there is a little too much exuberance in here. We might be hitting a high, right? That's that's kind of how you'd be looking at it, right? 
me right now. No, we're, no, we're no. That was speculating last, that, last, that you know. It was speculating going forward. Right, right, right. Yeah, you know, last Friday I, I forgot how I put it to my scribe, but I was. Uh, well, there's two. There's two things I remember now. We we closed above the mid Bollinger band on the on the weekly time frame on Friday. That's usually not a good sign. And the 10-day average of the trend was down to around 0.8. Yes, so yeah. that's just that was showing a little bit too much exuberance on a short-term basis. So at least that what I thought was going to at least stop the the rally and at least flip it sideways and possibly could even have a decline. Depends how the market reacted right. the following week, which is this week. Right, we didn't get panic. Uh, then I thought we maybe hit we take a shot at 420. Yeah, we did get panic. Well. That we're probably just in a minor consolidation. We're probably going to start heading higher again. And with a two-day trend adding up around three, we got quite a bit of panic in a short period of time. So I think that's enough fuel uh, for the market uh, to break the recent new highs. Yes. So I think a release going to break above Friday's high, and you know, how high is high? I don't know. Right. Because uh, on the on the daily too, I mean. You know, like if you look at the SPY today, I mean, there's hardly no volume, and the SPY's already rejected lower price. It's going to have tremendously lighter volume as to what it's going against. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, the right now as we stand, so the SPY only has 50 million shares, and that's going against 95 million. <laughs> it's like, okay, really? You know what I mean? We got to 333, yeah. 433, 60, and we're at 435, 70, 81. You know what I mean? So I, I, I can see that. And it doesn't even look to me. No, we're not. We're not going to do what we did yesterday. We did 76 million shares on the way down, which is still light because we hit at the highs. We're at 114 million. Right. Yeah, I get it. Right. Cool. Yeah. 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 The, the volumes. I always watch how you break new lows. Yesterday we did. Uh, uh, actually, I was comparing the volume instead of the day before yesterday's low compared to the day before that. I was comparing the volume of last Thursday, and we seemed to couldn't get through that last Thursday's low. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I'm Thursday's doing. Low. Same thing, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, right, and that's that's over a hundred million. Right. So you know, there's no volume to try to push this thing down. Uh, so uh, I'm thinking it's looking good. So good. I'm bullish. Well, okay. So hold it. Stay right there, because the next two charts we have, folks, are gold, and I know we got a lot of gold metal people out there are going to want to hear this. All right, Tim, just stay with us. We'll, uh, right. we'll be right back. Dow, Dow Industrials right now trading. Um, come on, where are you? Where are you? Down 45. Nasdaq's up 99. S&P's up 7. We'll come right back. Stay right there. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Sit down. Dow's off 42, NASDAQ's up 109, S&Ps are up 9. We're talking about our man, Mr. Tim Wood, and we're going to move on to the metals market, folks. So, Tim, I have the third chart up, which is the, you know, the XAU and then the ratio historic lows and then the rate of change right okay it's it's let's flip to uh, chart four okay i have uh, it just, up just it's a daily chart yes this is kind of a, a short-term chart anyhow something kind of unusual is going on here but you know the bottom chart is the 18-day average of the up down volume percent oh I, or, no it's not it's a fit, excuse me it's a 50-day average of the up-down volume percent for GDX. So it is just, the up-down volume is for just the GDX stocks. You can take a 50-day average. And anyhow, the next chart above that, or the next window above that, that's the bottom window, is the 50-day average of the advanced decline for just GDX. Right now, the bottom window, I went back as far as I could go, which is basically 2010, and I marked the times when this ratio, or this, uh, 50-day uh, moving average of the up-down volume, <coughs> excuse me, got below minus 20. And, he, uh, and every time it got below minus 20, the market quit going down. It actually flipped sideways. It went sideways for uh, several weeks. So according to that indicator, the decline's done, but we're not necessarily going to go up because uh, I had blue arrows drawn on the GDX chart. And, and they flipped sideways for a number of weeks. Um, I, I, I didn't go back and count how many weeks, but, you know, we may go sideways possibly most of the summer here. Uh, so yeah, I drive think everyone crazy, basis, right? The, go ahead. I said drive everyone crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, drive it, which is kind of good when everybody gives up. It's time to look to investment. But anyhow, I'm thinking this market's probably – you know, the downtrend's done, but trouble is the uptrend probably not going to start. It's going to flip sideways. Okay. And so, but sideways good. Sideways bills cause, you know, the old Weisskopf method. Oh, yeah. The longer the sideways yeah. movement, the longer the rally after it gets going. But, yeah, they're going to drive you, uh, people's, uh, uh, drive you nuts here. What's unusual, every time the uh, bottom window, uh, which is the up-down volume, got below minus 20, the next higher window, which is the advanced decline 50 day average, also got below minus 20. And I marked that, and that red arrow or the red lines there shows the times when all those had happened. Right. Well, this time around is the first time around that the uh, 50 day average did not get below minus 20. We're sitting around minus uh, 13. I can't quite read it. May have 15, I think. Okay. Yeah, 15. So, we're, so, so what the heck does that mean? Well, it may mean that the advanced decline line is actually stronger than the up-down volume, and we're still probably setting at a low here, but maybe a stronger low than the previous times I have those red lines uh, indicated there. Yeah. That's my interpretation. Right. But either way, I, I, I'm thinking we're, we're done going down, not saying we can't go down another percent, but in general, we're probably finding support here. And if you look on the GDX chart, there's quite a bit of support around that 30 range, which is that trend line I got drawn, that horizontal red line, is, 
you know, it's right around 29, 30 range. You're probably going to find support there and just kind of probably go dead for, for the next several weeks. So, anyhow, that's my analysis of, of the short term. Yes. Now we go to we go to the bigger picture. Okay. Which is back to uh, to uh, chart three. Okay. In the middle window. Yeah, the middle window is a monthly silver gold ratio. Yes. And, and this chart goes back far as I could go, which is like 1983 or something. Okay. Uh, but what I did notice here, back in 1991 and 93, it hit the ratio hit a bottom in this region where pretty close where we're at right now. And we hit it back in 2020, and we hit it back in, uh, well, August of 2022. So historically speaking, this ratio is extremely cheap on a bigger time frame. So, you know, historically we were bottoming – I don't have that trend line drawn, but if you look at the 2003 low and the 2009 low and the 2010 low, all happen around, looks like about 0.013 on that ratio to the right. And what we broke down to, we're back at the 92 lows as far as the ratios go. So to me, that's pretty important. You go back to where the ratios historically found lows and it made a double low back then, and we're making a double low, even though it's over a couple of years now. So I'm thinking something important could be happening. And I, I do a lot of stuff with momentum. And so I, I use, you know, RSI is kind of a momentum indicator. Uh, the rate of change is another momentum indicator. And then percent B, which kind of measures where the, the stock is, where it is compared to the Bollinger Bands. And when you get down below zero, means you're hitting below the Bollinger Band on that particular issue. Right. So you, you got three different moments. Well, yeah, you only, you only need two of the three, but you got two of the three uh, momentum indicators hitting a low here back in, in August of 2022. So that was the bottom of last year. And we, we've been basically going up. And I measured the times, how long we've we've gone up after those particular bicycles going back to 1985 and they're all at least one year um and we've been going up um for well not even a year yet august will be the year but that'd be the minimum we go up right and the previous uh, the previous signals have generated have at least gone up 100 uh, percent well one went up 95 percent but all the others at least 100 percent or more so to get 100%, we should go back about 180 on the, this is the XAU. So we start out about 90, do 100%, and you should do about 180. And at least, you know, a, a year. So I'm thinking on a short-term base, we may flip sideways. and But we're not at a top. I think that the rally may start in August. And I think the most powerful point of it where uh, comes, you know, probably later this year going into next year is what I'm starting to, I'm thinking. Yeah, you, you know what's so interesting too, Tim, is that I've been watching like Barrick Gold, right? So Barrick, you know, is trading 1634 right now. It came all the way back to its sign of strength off the bottom from March 10th. Now, this is what it did. We came off that bottom and you came, the first day you came off with 22 million, the second day was 37. Well, yesterday we rejected that with 13. And even though gold's still getting smoked today, Barrick's up 20 cents. And then Newmont is the same deal, meaning that, because if you take the GDX or the XAU, the HUI, see, if you just take Newmont and Barrick, they're at 19%, man. <laughs> Newmont's 10%. 0.3% of the weighting and Barrick is 8.6. So I, I can see what you're saying, man. And it's so intriguing because I can, you know, on the gold contract, it looks like it wants to go to 1902, but on the continuous contract, we already hit 1912. So it's like, okay, man, you know, this is going to get interesting, man. Yeah. So. I, I don't have a, a sharp tone, but I, I watch also the XAU to gold ratio. Yes. And if you look at that ratio, we've, we've gone virtually nowhere since 2000. I don't have that thing in front yeah, of me. I'm with you. It's been years. 
It we is. have gone nowhere. Well, listen. And I think we're going to break out of that uh, basing period yeah. at some point. It's, it's always a so. pleasure, Tim. Have you back next Thursday, man. You have a great week and a safe week, okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you. See you later, man. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Let's go to William in Boca Raton. William, thanks so much for holding, man. Really appreciate it. So you want to look at AMD, right? That's correct. I'm looking for um, a bottom on this thing, and I'm thinking 100 is kind of maybe it. Um, but um, I'm also on fundamentally their um, AI chips are going to start coming out, I think, in January. And uh, NVIDIA announced that they're going to get $30,000 for one chip. Yeah, imagine that. I know. Uh, hey, oh, well, listen, I, li I like where you're looking because see when you take a look at that that's kind of where we broke top size from that 103 26 was the high that day and then 97 was the bottom and that that what happens is is that you know when you make runs like that that's that's a normal retracement too it's not like a you know what i'm saying it's like that happens you know on a you, let's see that's yeah and that's also a 0.618 retracement of the move not the whole move, just the move that had started the on May third. Yeah, I, I I can see that man. Because uh, we just we we have let's see the gap is one hundred five sixty four. We hit one hundred nine so far. Yeah, so 
The, the place to, you know, you're going to have to keep an eye on it is that closing that gap right there from, uh, what, three or four weeks ago first. But Oh, yeah, for sure it's going to do that. Yeah, the first number you come up with, I like that number, because what happens also, William, is that you know, your back is going to be against the wall there, which is nice. Do you know what I'm saying? There's, there's yep. a huge amount of support there. I mean, you get that whole line coming right across, man. And that, I've, I've seen this many times that, you know, you go up your base, you go up your base, and then this is that's a real sweet base at that 102, basically. Yeah. And for the little bit that I, I hold right now, um, I just keep selling co weekly covered calls. There you go. And it's like, it's like getting a dividend well, every week. And you know what? What's great, you have a high volume high here, man. So this is going to go back to 132. That's a high volume yeah. high. If you know, I know you just you hung on for me, and thank God, thank you for doing that. But that's a high volume high, so that's going to go back to that level too. Yeah. I Have a think great so. one, man. Have thank a safe you. one, folks. Join Tommy tomorrow morning. Have a great one and a safe one. Wow! Look at him, folks.